as we've talked about, there are a number of different concessions that have now been put in the bill to win uh, the approval from people like Ron Johnson and uh, potentially Susan Collins. We'll see. But of course, all of these things are going to add to how much this bill costs, right? Right, exactly. Um, I actually, just before we got on um, camera here, I got the list of amendments that they're considering adding to the final package that we'll see here in the next couple of hours. And I think all in, we're probably looking at about $350 billion worth of stuff. Um, we could be off by a couple uh, 50 or so billion in either direction. So obviously they need to generate additional revenue to pay for this bill. And some things on the list of ways to generate additional revenue is to raise the tax on accrued foreign derived earnings, the repatriation tax we talk about. Um, that's going to increase to 7% for, for uh, illiquid assets and 14% for cash and equivalents. Um, you're going to take away the state and local tax deduction for corporations and businesses, which is about $120 billion in additional revenue. Um, the repatriation piece is also about $120 billion in additional revenue. And my biggest um, expectation here is that we might seriously have to have a conversation about raising the corporate tax above the 20% threshold that has been sought by this administration for the last Last couple of months and instead go to something closer to 21 or even 22 and a half percent. Um, in speaking with or, or observing the commentary from groups like Grover Norquist and Americans for Tax Reform and Coke Industries who want to keep the corporate rate as low as possible, they seem to get uncomfortable around 23 percent. Uh, so my expectation for investors is that we'll keep this to a top of about 22 and a half if it even rises up from 20 percent. Right. But yes, the deficit increases incurred as a result of this bill are well over a trillion dollars at this point. But Henry, just quickly here, Kevin Brady has said he's not open to going above 20%, right? Yes, and the Freedom Caucus is in the same vein. And in the past, you know, as of just a week ago, um, we were getting commentary from Treasury Secretary Mnuchin and um, NEC Director Gary Cohn that 20% was this line in the sand. And the reality is you're going to talk a big talk until push comes to shove. Mm. And when you actually have to vote on this bill. We, we discussed a couple weeks back about how um, Kevin Brady was also very uh, disinclined to make any moves on the state and local tax deduction. So they all need to give and take a little bit. Yeah. And from a process standpoint, um, just to go on a second here, you really want to get to conference. That's the whole goal of the strategy right now. Get a bill through the Senate, get 50 votes at least. I suspect they'll get 52, but start the conference process. Because once you start the conference process, it's just a handful of guys in a room writing this bill. And at the end of the day, whatever the conferees come up with has a straight up or down vote. Ah. You cannot change it any further. So that's really what our goal is today.